Hi, everybody. Um, over the last um, few weeks, I've been having a growing number of patients who are um, coming in and saying, like, you know, I'm just not doing quite as well. You know, my energy is kind of waning or my um, mast cell activation syndrome symptoms are getting worse or uh, my gut's not doing quite as well or uh, my you know, exercise recovery is not as good or just like kind of these different symptoms was like just in the last few weeks, um, not doing quite as well, maybe within the last month. Um, and <clears throat> In a majority of those cases, um, so far, some of them I've just chatted with a couple of them today, actually. Um, but the majority of those cases, um, they just need to optimize their level of vitamin D intake, and that's that's the missing piece of the puzzle. And um, again, as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you have any need for medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. The uh, some folks might think like, oh, if it's not feeling like just a lower mood, um, then maybe I um, it's not something that's vitamin D related, <clears throat> but um, vitamin D has its hands in many, many things. In, in, in large part, if you've listened to any of my videos before, or many of them I talked about the importance of the mitochondria. The mitochondria are really responsible for driving virtually everything, every process in the body. Of course, they produce the energy for our cells, and without energy, you can't really do much of anything on a cellular level. Um, <clears throat> so we need adequate vitamin D in order for the mitochondria to work properly. So literally anything can go off the rails if there's not enough vitamin D. Um, also, we know that vitamin D has direct impacts on helping to establish immune systems tolerance. It helps to activate our immune systems in such a way that we can go after microbes more easily. Without adequate vitamin D, we can be more prone to sensitivities and pro-inflammatory issues. And in my opinion, in my experience, I think it can really drive a lot of uh, mast cell activation, can certainly cause more inflammatory pathways to ensue. So even if folks are having more aches and pains or things like that, um, it might be something related to vitamin D deficiency. Now, of course, I'm speaking about, you know, here in beautiful Atlantic Canada, um, many of my patients are Canadian patients, but I have patients, of course, in other regions where there's, you know, this is not the uh, sunniest time of the year. If you're living at the equator, this probably does not apply to you. Um, but for those of us who are you know, maybe starting to feel the effects of like, oh, winter is kind of dragging on. You know, we've uh, here in Atlantic Canada, we've had a fairly dark winter, um, you know, quite a lot of cloudy days and whatnot. Um, just bearing in mind that vitamin D um, so important for so many different processes. So even if it's not an obvious like, oh yeah, my mood's lower, I'm feeling a bit more tired, um, vitamin D deficiency could be driving some flare-up symptoms around this time of year. Um, in my kind of mental algorithm, which I'd love to see my mental algorithm on paper sometime because I think it's there's a lot of interconnected pathways up there. It's kind of kind of cool to see that uh, you know, mapped out. Um, but if a patient's telling me like, you know, I was doing well, and then you know, within the last few weeks, I'm simply not doing as well. Um, of course, I'm asking about like, did something happen? Did you have some kind of a stress or a trauma? Did you have an infection? Did you get COVID? Did you you know run out of your supplements? Like obviously trying to figure out like what are the factors surrounding this? But for the patients where it's like, no, nothing really stands out. Like it's just kind of been just over a, a short, you know, few days or a couple of weeks. I'm just like kind of going downhill. Um, the vitamin D is kind of near the top of my list of suspects uh, for folks living in this, um, this climate. So um, if uh, you're listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh, that's been happening to me too. Um, please consider talking to your healthcare provider about uh, just making sure that you're getting an optimal dose of vitamin D and you know what is an optimal dose and that's maybe a conversation for another day. Um, but to talk to your healthcare provider about that to hopefully get that figured out. So um, yes, please think about vitamin D. Very, very important for lots of different reasons. Um, also just um, while I'm on the topic of vitamin D, um, I had <clears throat> I had a uh, really great interview with um, a clinician uh, named Dr. Sandra Timburic. Uh, she's another naturopathic doctor from out in British Columbia. Um, on my Overcoming Chronic Illness podcast, we had a great chat about something called vitamin D receptor resistance. Um, also a really fascinating area. Um, nothing really to do with what I just talked about, but uh, for folks who are dealing with chronic health issues, um, if vitamin D receptor resistance is something that has not been explored, um, it can be sometimes a very important thing to look at. It's kind of a newer thing in my practice. It's only been, only been, it's only been on my radar for the past six months or so, um, but with patients that I've been testing for uh, this condition, it's I've been picking it up all the time and starting to see some impressive clinical results when we're starting to address that. So uh, just my most recent um, episode of the Overcoming Chronic Illness podcast available on pretty much any podcast podcast platform out there. And uh, please check that out if you're interested. So uh, thanks for your attention. And if you have any questions or comments about this topic, just post in the comment section below.